Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to show you one of my favorite NuGet packages when it comes to testing, especially integration or acceptance testing, uh, but also for a different purpose, which I'm going to talk about later in the video, um, and that is wiremock.net. Now, wiremock.net is doing one thing, and it's doing it pretty well. It gives you the ability to mock an API, but not in the traditional sense, you know, mock the, the class with a proxy class and then make that return something, but instead it will create a full, fully fledged API server and you can very easily with the fluent syntax configure the server to respond to specific paths, requests, there's so many things you can configure it to do um, and even load from configuration files and so on and so forth. And the reason why I think it's amazing is going to be demonstrated in this video with one of my use cases, which is integration testing. You know, integration testing is very easy because sometimes you just spin up in Docker database or even locally, like we're going to do here, and then just do things. But what happens if you have like a third party dependency on an API? For example, this project has a dependency on the GitHub API. You can't run the GitHub API in Docker, you know? So you would usually mock that and capture an API response, a GitHub API response, and make something else respond in that fashion. And that's where Wiremock is coming in. I think this is way easier explained with an example. So I'm gonna dive into the code. If you like the type of content and you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So what do I have here? Let's do the usual thing where I just go straight into uh, the code and I run the API. So I'm gonna run this API here and all it's really doing it has a single user uh, controller which it accepts a user id and then it goes into this user service and it tries to find the user in the database and this is a real database i'm using uh, i'm i'm using mariadb for this i'm pretty sure yeah it's mariadb um so this is going to a database running locally on my pc it's getting a user if it exists and if it does uh it also gets um using one of the properties it gets the GitHub user model, and then it uses the username, uh, the GitHub username from that user to get its GitHub profile, calling the actual API uh, of GitHub. I'm using um, Refit for this, and then it correlates the two things, and it creates a single object, which includes uh, GitHub followers and blog URL from GitHub, and then full name and ID. Now, this is here to demonstrate a case where you have some things stored on your own database, but also you're using an API dependency um, from either internally or externally in your company. And integrating testing this, integration testing this is actually quite hard. I do actually have integration tests. Let me quickly show you an example of this running. If I call this uh, the user, I get back uh, the followers, the blog URL. These are real things from the API. And you can see here that this is uh, how the entry is in my database, in my MariaDB database. So writing integration tests for that is quite tricky because I can actually create users in the database um, running locally or in Docker, but I cannot really control things like the followers or the blog URL because, for example, if I go to my, uh, to my test here, what I have integration tests, and I'm using the... Um, the web application factory for those integration tests great tool it effectively just runs the api um, and it uses an in-memory http client to make those calls um, and makes our life easy and you can see here how how this is all structured and the test will pass now if i am to test myself for example let me just stick a breakpoint here uh, actually funny enough this test will fail i'll tell you why so i'm gonna run this uh, integration test which will go and grab um, a data access a repository from the actual service running then if i go to this database here the database viewer you see there's nothing and then if i step through the uh, setup test user uh, step it will actually create a unique user for this test in the database so it is integrating with the database and then it sets up the expected because this is how the user was when I originally wrote the test, you know, with this amount of followers. Then I'm creating the in-memory HTTP client. Uh, I will make the call to the API. I'm getting the response and then I'm reading the object. And if you see the object here, I actually gained three followers since I wrote this test, uh, which means that my test will actually fail because the GitHub API responded, but it responded with the new data, which is now changed. Same goes for the blog URL. If I wanted to change this, I would break this test. No, if I change this to five now, oh, and by the way, if I refresh this, the user is gone because we dispose it. 
um, as part of the dispose async uh, method of this XUnit project. If I run this again now with the outdated GitHub followers, this is passing. But it's a matter of time for somebody to follow or unfollow for this to break again. So how do we make this robust? Well, this is where wiremock.net comes into the picture. See, the GitHub API isn't really a crucial part per se as part of our integration test. We, we need to know that we can make a call to some API that responds in the fashion that the GitHub API would respond, but it doesn't have to be owned by GitHub. You know, we could run a version of it locally technically, and as long as it responds exactly the same, then we're fine. That's what Wiremock will do, and I'll show you how you can do this. If I go to NuGet and I select uh, wiremock.net, the first package you see, and I install it, uh, I'm able to create something called a Wiremock server. Uh, and in order to demonstrate what the Wiremock server is, I'm going to actually go to this console app here. And I'm going to install the Wiremock package here as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly uh, show you how this works. Wiremock server equals wire, uh, wiremock server dot start. This will start a Wiremock server, which is the thing that will be mocking what we want to mock. In this scenario, the GitHub API. And I'm going to add two things, console.readkey, so it stays there uh, alive. And then when we do that, wiremock dot uh, stop, and then wiremock dot dispose. Here we go. And what I want on the for this server, like if I just run it here, I can do this. Console dot uh, right line uh, server is running at, and then as soon as this starts, it will get an available port, and it will um, you can get the URL. Let's get the first one. So if I run this. Let me just stop the, the running API. If I run this, it should give me a, yes, here we go, it gives me a port. And if I copy that and go in Postman and try to access that, it is a running API server running locally, just a running uh, HTTP server. And it says no mapping found, no matching mapping found. How can I make this match? When I can simply go here and I can say wiremock server dot given something in this scenario, a request, and we're gonna do request dot create with path forward slash test so when we hit that url forward slash test using get the get verb http verb and let me just make these lines a bit clearer then we want this to respond with a response that create with body hello from wiremock and that's it and now, if I run this again, uh, surely this will start with a different, yeah, it starts with a different port, I think. Uh, here we go. So if I do that, and now I do forward slash, it, it still responds as nothing to the root. But if I do forward slash test, it says hello from Wiremock. So with this Fluent API, that's so, like, you can do so many things. You can, let me show you here. You can even do like with body as JSON or with body from file. You can actually load, you know, save response on a file and load it from the file. It, it's awesome, honestly awesome. Um, but that's the main idea of this library. Now let's see how we can integrate it in our integration tests, no pun intended. Um, and I'm going to go to the um, integration test app factory, which is a built in component of the .NET testing library, which helps you run a version of your application that is accessible through an in-memory HTTP client. And I'm going to say override configure web host method. And this is where we can actually tamper with the configuration of the project because the main API that we're running here has app settings and those app settings have this hardwired, well, configurable basically. Um, and you can change this by changing something in here when this will start. So we can do builder.configure app configuration, which is an interesting name. And then in here, you can basically say configuration builder dot add in memory collection, which in our scenario is just a key value, a pair array, which will contain the thing we want to override. So for us, it's going to be yeah, GitHub, which is the first thing. Um, and then the value, which is the, the URL we're going to get from a Wiremock. And to do that, we're going to say Wiremock server equals wiremock server dot start and once this starts it will have a url so we're going to say wiremock server dot urls the first one and we can now delete that god i love that feature and now all we need to do is also say configure services 
and then we are going to say collection dot add singleton and we're going to add the wiremock server in the project so we can get it in the tests so with that out of the way i think we have everything we need to run or to grab wiremock in our tests i'm going here and actually i'm going to add another thing i'm going to add auto fixture because i don't want to um, go ahead and um, manually configure each one of those properties because i only care about two properties the followers and the blog url so two things i want to do private read only uh, fixture underscore fixture equals new new here we go and then the other thing is the private um wiremock server actually that can also be read only a uh, wiremock server you go here and then in order to get that since we configured it as a singleton in the factory we can say uh, wiremock server equals factory dot services dot get required service and we're gonna grab the wiremock server so now we can use it on each test and as part of the arrange um, section uh, make wiremock respond to what we want so what we're gonna do is say wiremock server dot given which is what we did before um, request dot create um, with path and the path that we want to respond at is the github api's path which is forward slash users so forward slash users forward slash the user uh, the github username that we want which is test user dot username so we're gonna put that here um, and we want you here you go and here you go um, respond with and we want it to respond dot create with body and let's create that github user equals fixture dot build uh, a github user and there's uh, there's three things we want to configure here and uh, the first one is with um user dot uh, name which is the username since we already have it why not just configure it so you go here then let me just copy this a couple of more times and it's going to be at the blog url um, which uh, we can get it from the expected user that we're configuring here so you go here and uh, you blog and you followers and you go here so we're getting it from that we could even uh, extract it as separate constants and use them there um, and then we can easily change that to whatever we want um, and now we can just say with body as json which will serialize the github user uh, and then we also need to say on this one let me just expand it a little bit um, with status code okay because that's how the github api responds another benefit of doing like this is that you don't have to worry about the api you're using uh, throttling you if you're running multiple tests so now our server is configured to respond with that user meaning i can now reliably and in fact let me let me do this again i'm gonna go in the controller i'm gonna stick a breakpoint at the very beginning of the execution flow so you can see exactly what's happening uh, and also let me put one in the integration test factory here so without any further ado let's go straight into running this test now and this is being executed here we go so first things first configuring the web host which is uh, an integral part for running this um, and this will create the server as you can see the server is created and running uh, without any mappings yet it does have a port though it's 2575 uh, two. and we go ahead and we add this in the memory collection and let me see if i can actually if i actually do have time to book a breakpoint here let's see when we when we hit that what's happening so startup is is happening and here we go server is added as uh, a mocked thing and then we are trying to get the data access repository goes here user is created let's see if the user is created yes the user is here expected user configuring the wiremock server to respond with this um with what oh yeah that's my bad i should have uh, said create here because i was in builder mode 
and didn't actually create the the item so let's do that again here we go user is now properly created yep and it has the followers we want and it has the, the username and also the url path uh, for the blog which is uh, here awesome so configuring that creating the client calling you can see now that the configuration will be triggered because we're going to initialize, initialize a client for the first time so if why are you oh yeah here we go so if i do that and show you you can see that it no longer loads the thing from the app config which is this and it was overridden by the in-memory collection that we added so if i go back here you can see now that when i call this user the user is the one we made internally in fact let me just step into the method to show you this in action first user from the database you can see that created here and then second user from the github user and you can see the github api uh, that the client is calling the one that we told it to call gets the user back with all the mock data actually firing a request as you'd want in an integration test and then it's cleaning up the user here in the in the user repository and that's it and the test is passing and if i was to just run those two things together um, they easily both run and both pass so that's the main idea another reason why i'm using watermark personally is that working the team internally it's easy to communicate a contract how the api you want to build will look like so you can start coding against that but it takes time for other teams to actually build the thing but if you know the contract and you know how it will respond you can use watermark as part of your actual application during development to mock your third-party dependencies or internal dependencies and when they're ready you just change the URL, maybe do a few small changes that happen during development, uh, and that's it. So that's another reason why I love Warmock because it's so versatile. You can use it on basically anything that you need to, to get an API to respond in a very specific way. Now, this is a very introductory video on the concept, and by no means did I cover anything major about this library but they have great documentation on github i highly recommend you check them out you give them a star on github because i do believe that it's a great library that every .NET engineer can benefit from that's all i have for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making this video possible if you want to support me as well you're gonna find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well and i'll see you in the next video keep coding